welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. So what I am doing is actually pulling up the question that inspired this video because you know in my facebook group fail pal we have a live orchid class every tuesday and last tuesday we had already talked about water culture so in this video i'm not going to be repetitious i'm going to answer a question that was sent to me from a dear fail pal you know fail pal fifi if you don't know Fab Pal Fifi, her channel is now called Corina. Honey, if that's not the name, honey, forgive me, Corina. But um, Fab Pal Corina, or oh God, here we go. Okay, here we go. Corina, 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 I think that's it. <laughs> She's in Canada, and she is a water culture queen. So I really hope that you can be here with me today, um, Fab Pal. I call her Fifi. Fab Pal, Pal Fifi. I hope you can join me today while I am live. But she actually said, um, "Just look at me. I am not afraid to say I love you, Daryl." When I got when I got as a present my first orchid, I repotted it in soil. Ha ha ha. To stay on topic, what do you do for most of the fowls in water culture? Semi, full, or hydro? Since I've been growing in water culture, I realize that when they are in water all the time, they get lazy and don't work too hard on growing roots or semi for me worked so semi for me worked the best and i have tons of roots so fab pal fifi thank you thank you thank you for you know even caring enough about me to ask me thank you you know for even saying that you love me publicly because honey in the orchid community if you say you love fab pal the real honey that automatically means you hate somebody else and that's just not the case so it's so good to see that you know old things are fading away and behold all things have become new honey i put my childish ways behind me i put them behind me so let's move forward okay so you know i'm orchids for dummies you know the people's channel you know my um audience is typically you know your housewives or your house husbands that's at home caring for things and so they really don't have time to get on youtube honey and search to look up what to do i just showed you a video of how my mom who has a natural green thumb which is the people i'm um, typically talking about the way that they grow orchids is completely different okay than how we grow orchids my mom her method check out that video is insane so what i have learned to do to be able to still connect to my audience because i can use terminology and they're like okay you're talking over my head i don't know what you mean so as a result i try to keep down well how can i say this i try to not overthink it and so the main thing about water culture or growing phalaenopsis in particular, especially if they are looking up the research, they want to feel welcomed, okay? They want to feel encouraged that they are able to do it. So um, that is what my main goal is, educating people on how to grow orchids in water culture, is to just give them the confidence to try it, and not to let them be defeated and saying, well, it did not work for me. So when it pertains to full semi or um, hydro, honey, mama don't even know what that means, okay? What my goal is with my orchids in water is making sure that the water is clean and um, making sure that I don't have that black mold and white mold. For instance... This orchid right here is just an orchid. And my fail pals from my Facebook group can contest that this is an orchid that's been sitting on the floor of my home for about 
uh oh, let it go about a whole month. And so I ended up just because she started growing, honey. She was just laying on the floor and she started growing. So I said, okay, honey, now you talking my type of language. So what I did was um, I just threw her in the water. And as you can see, this water is clean. It still has her old roots on here. And she's actually been in here um, for about a week now. So I'm really surprised because as you can see that moss, all those type of organic um, matters will, you know, cause that fungus to form. So that is the goal is to make sure that your orchids have a clean environment to grow in. And I will show you what will happen. Oh, here we go right here. And I mean, I really don't, I don't think this is a good example because I don't know what her problem is. But she started growing new roots and then she got to the water and she said, oh, no, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am. So it's like, girl, I'm so mad. It's no white mold, no black mold. It's no mold. But she got to the water and she said, oh, no, ma'am. And I mean, the roots is burned. Girl, I'm only giving you rainwater. What's the tea? And you can see her water is clean. So I say that to say this. Sometimes you will have orchids and they just saying, oh, no, ma'am, I'm not going to do water culture. Many of us, we get our orchids and then we put them in water and they start dropping those bottom leaves immediately. Well, that is an indication that they just need extra fertilizer. But as you can see, um, most of these orchids, they were rootless. And so as far as growing the roots, I'm not having that problem. What problem I am having is getting them to bloom, okay? It's, honey, it's time for some blooms, okay? And stick around where I'm going to show you, you know, some phalaenopsis that is in water that's in bloom. Now, when it pertains to the level of water, it really, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that I don't like, I'm sorry, do you see this little, the little bait? That's what I did not want to happen. That's what I did not want to happen. And that's what I hate about growing on these dang on racks. Oh, my God. Duh. That's what I didn't want to happen because now water all on my floor. Water is in her crown. And you already know that's how they die. So I got to go behind myself and clean all of that up. But I'm sorry. So as far as the water level, I can't move this stuff, y'all. Y'all have to work with me. The Sibidium is in the way. Y'all got to work with me. But you can see how um, this is this is absolutely the max of water that I would put in there. And you can see that the bottom of it or the base of it is actually touching the water. Anything above that causes rot and mold. But um, even if I just had those strings in the water, as long as it has some form some way to you know receive water and nutrients you can see i have roots everywhere that is not the problem i don't like to cut off my um flower spikes as they will be an indication if my phalaenopsis orchids is not receiving enough nutrients because if they're not receiving enough nutrients, they're going to eat that stalk. So in the event that they still have flower spikes and they um, start to eat the bottom leaves, I mean, if they um, don't eat the leaves, but they eat the flower spike first, I'm like, okay, they need more fertilizer versus the flower spike just fading away because it's the natural process. So that's why I love to keep my... Um, orchid stems on because it's an antenna to know what they need and you already know when the tips get to you know drying off like that that that's going to be a calcium um calcium deficiency give me one second let's take a look at another orchid or some more orchids oh, okay here we go now this baby right here you see the wrinkled leaves some I, girl 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 this is girl girl i was like well maybe she isn't going to adjust to water culture but you know after giving her some time now she's growing the roots okay she had been through i dropped her on the floor all kind of stuff you see that matter right there typically that will cause mold okay and so you want to keep it clean but you want to first wait until you get those signs and symptoms first because you don't you know i advocate and not doing too much 
But um, as long as the water is clean, that is what you are looking for. Even when the stem does look a little black, as long as that water is clean and you're not seeing any mold or fungus, you good. You good. So I think the question that you really should be asking, um, Fab Pal Fifi, is what type of fertilizer to give them to encourage that new root production because um, my phalaenopsis orchids that is in water culture knowing that they don't have the nutrients that um that my potted phalaenopsis orchids are getting you know i get my my mist and um i'm not faithful in doing it because i don't want you guys to think that mama walk around misting the girls all day I, even as is recommended on the um, fertilizer bottle, I only do it late at night. So before I go to bed and early in the morning when I wake up to open the blinds and stuff, I give them a little mist. Let me show you. I've really missed everybody, but it's really I'm really doing it because my orchids and water culture need it. And expect this is it. This encourages new roots. This is seaweed kelp. So that is why all of my phalaenopsis orchids has um, roots. I don't have a problem with them growing roots, honey. I have a problem with them blooming. Now, this is, is a flower spike. Now, I've learned from my mistakes because I've done this before where it does not have adequate roots and I'm really trying to get it to focus on, you know, um, producing those new roots. So, I'm actually going to have to cut that flower spike off. I know I don't want it. I don't want to, but this is actually an orchid that I'm really not in a position to lose because I really love the blooms. So I'm going to do what is best for it and cut that flower spike off. And as you can kind of see, all of the water levels is different. It's really just depending upon the roots and the, um, you know, making sure that the plant has access to, um, to water. Because believe it or not, um, especially like this orchid right here, some of these orchids, the water dries out, girl, we talking about in days, okay? Like this is another one that drinks a lot of water. Girl, that water, we this water will be gone in about three days. So um, I have to, you know, give this one a little bit more. But, um, and it also depends on the container, um, as far as how much water I will put in there as well, because, you know, uh, one of these containers down here, um, this right here takes up a lot of rain water. Let me get this water. You see this water right here? It will take it down. It will take it down. But, um, and so you can see the roots is touching the bottom of the water. So I would even, um, I guess this is what you would call semi but I would even, you know, have the water um, this low. But I like to, you know, just keep in mind that I want the top layer of the roots to be hydrated so they don't dry out as well. And, um, mm, okay, one more section and then we are done. We are done. Well, let me show you this one because this is, you know, I don't know. Maybe I don't know, but this is one of one of my proudest of works. Cause you know them big phalaenopsis, honey, is hell in the high water. Uh, I'm trying to get a good place to show you. Here we go. Here we go. So this is um a larger phalaenopsis and actually one of the first, not the first, but one of the first that um I transitioned to water culture. And um as you can see the the smaller leaves and you can even see a little discoloration inside of the chlorophyll, okay? That's all because it's in water and it's not getting those nutrients. So what I have started to do is um I've started to fertilize them. Um, the same way I fertilize my potted plants. So be looking out for that video. I've been doing it about six months and I've been trying to, you know, watch it and, you know, make sure that I'm able to um, teach you guys um, the good things that has happened as a result. And trying to make sure that the fertilizer is not too weak and not too strong as well. You see that little fuzziness on the roots? Isn't that so cute? That's actually not snow mold. That is what the orchid produces to attach itself to something. 
okay so that's a video to come because i don't want you guys thinking that you have snow mold and honey you 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 don't okay so you already know here on orchid for dummies i am an orchid minimalist meaning that honey i don't like to do i don't like to do the orchid work okay i don't like to do the orchid work <sighs> so um if you can see this phalaenopsis right here honey um, um, she has a little algae growing on the roots and a little, um, root burn that came from using, um, fertilized, um, not fertilized, but that came from, um, uh, fish aquarium water. So that's why I say caution when using the water from your aquarium. I know my mama do it, but I'm telling you, okay. You, so you can't come back and say for fair pair of drills, they put, use aquarium water. I didn't like it. It didn't work for me, but it might work for you like it worked for um, my mom. And so I just want you to um, see that the roots is not the problem. The problem is getting it to grow, you know, leaves and roots and just making sure that they are healthy. This is a phalaenopsis that I'm really proud of because I used that Fizan 20. It will always have some kind of ooey and gooey. I know you can see that ooey and gooey, but girl, believe it or not, it used to be so much worse. And um, it's really starting to clear up and I'm starting to get that new root production from it. So I'm really, really excited. This is another phalaenopsis that, you know, just one of those pride and joy moments. Because it has so many of those beautiful roots. And she just now lost a leaf. So she's been doing really good. She hasn't been, you know, dropping leaves. So when they get to this level, then I can take it to the next step. I know, hey, you're ready to bloom. Let me do what I need to do to uh, make sure that you bloom. And remember, sometimes it's because we're just not fertilizing them enough. So um, keep that in mind. Now, you know, the roots being lazy and stuff like that, as long as they are absorbing those, um, the water and those nutrients and not turning into mold and things of that sort, you in a good position, mama. You doing good, mama. Just take your time. Just take your time. Make sure that your water stays clean. Okay. And make sure that you're not slicing and dicing. Now, even though this root looks um, messed up, when I wash it off and I try to pull the vellum off the root, it doesn't come off. So that's still a root that's, you know, maintaining, you know, um, that's absorbing nutrients. I'm sorry, Falpels. It's absorbing nutrients. So this is just a seedling. So I don't have to tell you, Falpel Fifi, you know that water culture still works. Um, this is, um, let me show you another one. Give me one second. So this one right here, this is, an, most of my orchids end up in water culture because, honey, they'd have been sitting on the floor for so long because I'd have knocked them over and then just don't feel like repotting them. But I've only had her in here for um, a couple of days and she is already, you know, giving me new root production. And so those are the orchids that I typically leave in water culture and let them live their best life because I just put her in here and she is having immediate success. So sometimes, you know, putting them in a different uh, window, those can be things that will, you know, encourage them to um, give you some new growth, putting them in a different window, even turning them around. Okay, turning them around, they would think it's a different season. Okay, putting it up, trying them under different grow lights. I think the lighting and the fertilization is more so what would have to do with, you know, getting your orchids to be stronger, you know, and make you, you know, make you proud and give you good roots. So I hope I was able to help you. You're not here. Hey, husband, thank you so much for watching me. I'm not talking about you today. So, um, um, honey, I'm not talking about you. I'm trying to help my fab pal, um, Fifi. This is um, the orchid that I showed you. Um, water culture versus potted. Girl, no ma'am. Girl, no ma'am. I can't do it. I can't. Girl, I'm making a mess. I can't do it. I can't do it. So I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let y'all go, cause honey, out of out of out of 
now I got clean up and stuff, and honey, I just don't want to do it. But I just wanted you to see all the amazing new growth. I mean, I, I got roots. I mean, the roots growing. It's not the roots. Okay, it's trying to get them to flower. And understand, honey, they get knocked down. Uh, my main issue with water culture is remembering what position to place them back in because I, I'm not able to, you know, tag, put a tag or something like that to let me know which direction it's in. So I always forget which way to put it. And, you know, if I have it facing this way one day and then it facing the other way another day, you know, they don't like that, especially phalaenopsis because they're so light sensitive. And so that's why I was telling you that that could be a way to get them to um, stimulate that new growth for you just by turning them around. Um, but I love growing my orchids in water culture because, you know, girl, if I had to water all of these orchids, you know, and let them soak and stuff, I would not have any free time to talk to you guys. I thank you so much for staying in tune. I thank you for all that you do for me. I hope that you have some uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, all of that stuff, honey. I hope that you, I wish you good tidings, good tidings and cheer and laughter and love. And I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Until...